Hello everyone, my name is Shay, and today I want to give a quick update on my progress with ROS and talk about some of the progress I've made and some of the setbacks I've had. So over the past couple of weeks, I've been trying to get my TurboBot 3 robot here um, to create a map of the world around it and then navigate within that world. I've been following along in this book again, The Programming Robots with ROS, Practical Introduction to the Robot Operating System. And as you can see here, I've been trying to, the ultimate goal is that I want the robot to be able to, if I can find the picture, here we go. I want the robot to be able to first create a map, which I was able to do, which I'll show later on, something like this. And then I want to be able to localize itself or realize where it is within that map and then give the robot a set point or, or a goal position to go to and then the robot will figure out on its own how to autonomously navigate to that position. So that was the goal. But I had several setbacks. First of all, this book, as I mentioned in my last video, is a couple years old and it runs an older version of ROS. This is running on ROS Indigo while I'm using ROS Melodic. So I've had to make some workarounds to account for that. But regardless of that, I found that the commands, uh, basically the tutorials in the book haven't quite worked quite right. Yeah, that's probably because this is an older book. And also I'm using TurboBot 3 instead of TurboBot 2. So I went online and I tried to find the see here. So I was also trying to follow along a little bit in the official TurboBot 30 tutorials, simulations. And I was also having the same issue with this tutorial series. What's happening is every time I try and load the robot into Arviz here, it's a visual, visualization program. Every time I try and load the robot in Arviz, I get this white robot here. You can see my robot model is, is broken. I get all these errors. No transform from base link to base footprint. For anyone who's familiar with ROS, that's from what I've discovered, this is pretty much the robot publisher, robot state publisher, is not uh, set up to publish the locations of the different parts of the TurtleBot robot here, which is kind of weird. So I had to do some workarounds to make this work. So if I go, so I'm going to show my, uh, my workarounds here. And uh, through my workarounds, I'll explain the progress I've been able to make so far. So let's close all this other ROS stuff. Not close ROS core. Close this. Then I'll start in the beginning. So first, what I found worked uh, if you're having the same issue is well, first of all you want to not this one this turtlebot 3 worldlaunch file you want to launch this guy but you want to make a change to it I ended up making a change to the launch file I'll show you here Okay, so uh, again, the reason why that robot was coming out white in that previous view was because the robot state publisher wasn't working. From my understanding, that node wasn't running. So what I did was in the TurboBot 3 world, this is the original, this broken launch, this launch file that I renamed to broken, this is the original one. And what I've done is, oops. about three launch world dot launch I've added this extra line in here it's node name equals robot state publisher this is what you need to actually publish the position of the robot not have your model break in Arbiz. you see they're all the same pretty much except for that last one line of one at line I've added in here so that change when I run Arbiz.
now. While it's not launched from a fancy launch file like in the tutorials, which would be nice, it should actually come in here and the robot, when I add the robot model, the robot will hopefully be, oops, I actually can't see this, so it's, uh, I always forget my screen capture program. I have a wider screen than can be viewed here. So here we go. So here's my robot model on uh, in gazebo. So you can see the spine. That's working. So if I can go back to our viz. Okay. So now if I have my robot model and robot model. Boom. So now because I added that line about the robot state publisher in the launch file, we have a working robot here. And you can see the details, you know, all the STL files and all their glory here. So we have that. And then from here, you can add a laser scan. Let me change the topic to scan. And now the robot, the turtle bot, again from my last video, I was only doing a one laser scan, or one uh, one point in front of it. Now the robot is doing using this lidar module right here, this black thing. So this is doesn't show it in the simulation, but this spins 360 degrees and takes distance measurements as it spins. So that way you can get a, get a full picture, fuller picture of the world around the robot. You can see the laser is scanning and it is picking up the view of this, picking up what this robot sees in a plane, a two dimensional plane. You can kind of compare like this, I suppose. No, okay. But if you see, you've got these three pillars here, or nine pillars total, and you can see the same pillars are represented here in this frame in this uh, window. So I got that working. That was a, probably about a week of troubleshooting. Um, but then the next step was, okay, I have this guy. How do I create a map of the world now for my robot to use and drive around in the future? So, well, what you end up having to do is basically you drive through this world, you can record the data and then use SLAM and there's a G-mapping package in ROS to, there's a SLAM package in ROS to map out the world. And that's what we did. So I used the SLAM G-mapping package to map this out. So if we drive around, I just want to demonstrate that. I'm actually going to demonstrate the SLAM uh, package because that takes time. It kind of goes through the data and it takes a few minutes to do. So I don't want to demonstrate that. I will demonstrate what it looks like driving around. What you, whoops. I'm going to demonstrate what you would do to actually make a map of the world. Oops, not Ross Core. Okay, our turtle bot. Here we go, cool. So as I, let's see if we can kind of get this out of the way. Okay, as I drive around in the world, you can see the LiDAR scan updates. And basically what the SLAM G mapping package would do is combine all these scans together into one data set. So it takes every scan and combines them together pretty much and makes it into a map that the robot can use. If you see, it matches up with the robot sees pretty closely in the real world here, or, you know, in the simulated real world. And yeah, so the end result is you run this through a bunch of, like I said, the SLAM G mapping software. And then what you end up is with a map. I'll show my result here. This is what I, you end up with. So that's a map. And you can see it pretty closely represents my simulated world. There we go. I think it's pretty cool. Now, as I said, the next step would have been to actually, right now it's just a map, it's an empty map, and the robot has no idea where it is within this map. 
So the next step would have been to localize the robot as it's called, or basically the robot has to figure out where it is in this map and then um, click somewhere on the map or choose a spot on the map and then have the ROS navigation stack, the ROS navigation planners plan a route from where the robot is, where the robot has determined it is on the map to the location I decided on and have it avoid obstacles as it goes there. But unfortunately at this point, I've kind of gotten to the point with the tutorials where I've gotten stuck in the sense that the software is older and the stuff is broken. And I'm kind of, kind of over trying to troubleshoot someone else's tutorials, trying to engineer my own solutions to tutorials. I think in the future, I'm going to try and build my own robot and go to the real world with um, a robot with ROS. So that's it for my update. ROS prog progress. Thanks for watching.